Ladies and gents, welcome back to the Player Zone YouTube channel. And we're back once again for a match week prediction for the Premier League. It is match week 20 and some more massive games to talk about off last week where, gee, there was upsets and there was big wins galore. There was great comebacks and everything in between. That's what we love about the Premier League. Match week's coming left, right and centre right now. So it's kept me on my toes, but I'm um, staying consistent and absolutely loving this series. Guys, if you also are enjoying it, please make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, and also share the channel with mates who would enjoy similar sort of content. Getting back on track though, last week we came into the game week with 115 of our prediction points and left on 123, so eight points over the last match week, which I was very, very happy with. Included two perfect results in there as well. So didn't predict well, but predicted the score lines very, very well. And for those who are new to the channel and wondering how the prediction points work, we get three points for a correct scoreline, one point for the correct result, and zero if you get neither. So keeps me my toes. 123 points after 19 weeks, I'll take it. But we're looking for another strong game week this weekend with some big games to celebrate as well. So with that all being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight into the predictions. Our first game sees us back at Kenilworth Road this weekend. It is Luton Town hosting Chelsea. And this game is very, very hard to predict. We know how good Luton have been at Kenilworth Road as of recent. They've taken it to the big clubs. They've taken it to Liverpool. They've taken it to Arsenal. They've taken it to City also. They got a massive come from behind win last time out versus Sheffield United. 3-2, including two own goals there at the end. But they just have that thing about them right now, that, that aura, that mentality. They keep getting over the lines in tough games. And at home, they're very, very hard to beat. Last time out at home, obviously beating Newcastle 1-0. They have the ability to get on top of teams, to cramp spaces, to make it hard for opposition. And for this Chelsea team that's quite young, inexperienced, it could be too much for them to handle. It's going to be an interesting sort of midfield battle, right? You've got Nkunku who made his first start for Chelsea. He was very impressive alongside Gallagher in that midfield in Caicedo. They get Lavia back also. So that Chelsea midfield is quite strong. But that down the middle has been where Luton's been at their best. Think about Ross Barkley down there, um, really controlling the game. Tough inside players in there that congest spaces. And you know what? They spring counter-attacks using the flanks. Doughty in the goals. Obviously, Bell has been very impressive as well. And we know that from wide areas, like with Townsend there, they've got quality that can get balls into the box. And Adebayo and Morris and these kind of guys like Brown, you know, getting on the score sheet. And that's where Luton are so dangerous right now. They just seem to have so much, you know, effort, intensity all around the pitch. And then they've got that quality at the current point in time to beat up teams. And that's where I think Chelsea have to be worried to not get countered or, or beat on the flanks because that's where Luton are at their best. They get it to wide areas. They can just the central areas and then they can get on top of you. In terms of Chelsea, it was a hard-fought win versus Crystal Palace in midweek. 2-1 there. Matoweke converts the penalty to you know, give the side the 2-1 win. Again, there's spots in this game where they're poor. There's spots where they're great. And that's where we just we don't really know what Chelsea is all about right now. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt in this game because they have so much more quality than Luton. But it's going to be a tight affair once more. I'm going with a Chelsea 2-1 win. But again, could swing either way, especially at Kenilworth Road. Our next game sees Aston Villa host Burnley in a very interesting affair. You know, Aston Villa with some poor before, or poor results, I guess the best way to put it, over the last two weeks. That 1-1 draw to Sheffield United and the you know, dramatic Manchester United comeback 3-2. So I've only picked up one point in their last um, two games. One from a possible six. That's not real title could challenges type of form. But we're speaking about them being in a title race a few weeks ago. And they're not too far away from it despite the poor results. They're looking to bounce back. Being at home is going to help them. Obviously, that 15-game win streak was halted, but they're still unbeaten in a very long time at Villa Park and looking for probably a more consistent 90-minute performance. There have been lapses in these, in these last two games, and that's helped, you know, cost them. In this game here, I reckon they'll be on song from the start. And it's just unfortunate Burnley are coming up against a side that will look to bounce back. Obviously, Burnley have been impressive in recent weeks. Um, only two games ago, getting that win over Fulham, but um, we're just outclassed by Liverpool during the week. 2-0 loss there. Both sides are playing different styles of football. Burnley are reverting to that more you know, deeper sitting, absorbing some pressure and using their pace in Erda Bear, um, Ziki Amdouni and the likes uh, up front of those you know, pacey forward areas. Whereas Aston Villa have gone about controlling games, Dick Taney from midfield using that depth in Louise, uh, in McGinn, Kamara and the likes in midfield and building up through playing triangles and playing through teams. So two different styles of play right now that are coming up against each other. 
with the form that Villa are in, you know, it could be a bit nervy early on, but if they get the first goal, they'll definitely run away with this game. I think it's pretty straightforward, this one. I've got Villa winning this game, three goals to nil. Our next game is an all-London affair. Crystal Palace are hosting Brentford and two teams that, you know, might not be far away from each other in terms of points, but in terms of performances right now, Crystal Palace are head and shoulders ahead of Brentford. Put up another great performance versus Chelsea, but still can't get over the line and get a th set of three points or an important point. They unfortunately lost to Chelsea 2-1, but in that second half with a dominant side for major periods, great to see Elise back out there and doing what he does best, causing havoc on the football pitch. Left foot, right foot, dribbling past players, using that strength and holding off um, others. And Eze as well, connecting with him up top. We know those two are so dangerous when they're together, like we saw last year when Roy Hodgson rejoined the club. These guys are the key to them being successful because when they start scoring more goals and creating more chances like we've seen in recent weeks, Crystal Palace are a very hard team to stop. And they're going off this you know, great feel of you know, dominating midfield and being aggressive in midfield, pressing teams high up the pitch and forcing turnovers. They come up against the Brentford side who they want to press really high. You know, In the week, a really, really disappointing loss to Wolves where they made their own mistakes. Zach Collins with a few mistakes, you know, passing out from the back or misplacing touches and are just all over the place. They're looking to bounce back. But they come against the Crystal Palace side. They've been in such great form and putting together great performances. I just can't see them getting over the line. If you're Brentford, you want to try and absorb as much pressure as possible. Let you know, let Crystal Palace you know, bring pressure on you and then try and spring on the counter-attack because right now, they lack real confidence on the ball. They don't really own midfield battles. And they need to refine that sort of grittiness in defence in midfield to try and hopefully refine a spark in that side there. As such, I think Crystal Palace get over the line, especially being at home. I've got Palace winning this game, two goals to one. Our next game is in Manchester, and unfortunately it's going to be a bit of a slam dunk. City are back at home, taking on Sheffield United. You know, Man City doing what they do best. They came from behind, now playing you know, terrific football versus Everton with a 3-1 win there, you know, capitalising mistakes, being clinical in front of goal. And they'll probably do the same thing versus Sheffield United, but they'll dominate this game. Sheffield United, we know, aren't the strongest side. I reckon the weakest side in the Premier League. You know, Chris Wilder has done some magic in recent weeks, kept them in games, kept them competitive. And that's what Chris Wilder can do for a side. He'll keep a team competitive, keep teams in games. We know that record in 2021, that season there, where he just kept drawing games and got um, Sheffield United well and truly in the top half. He's trying to replicate that right now, but it seems that like they're playing too much catch-up and the squad just isn't good enough. So as such... Man City with their quality, and now that they hit that around January period where they just go on winning streaks for fun, I think they'll just absolutely batter Sheffield United in this one. Man City 6, Sheffield United 1 is my prediction, but it could get very ugly in this game. Our next game is a very interesting mid to bottom half table clash. We've got Wolves at home hosting Everton. Two teams in terrific form right now and playing some good football. Starting with Wolves, they keep taking major scalps at home. Last time out at home, they beat Chelsea. Um, they've beaten Newcastle. They've also beaten Man City and taken it to sides, also beating Spurs as well. So they're a team that's very hard to beat at home. They've won back-to-back -back Premier League games for the first time in a very long time, beating Brentford midweek, just out-hustling, out-working and out-playing that Brentford side who had so many mistakes in them. And that's what they can do. They're really, really you know, clinical when they get their chances. It's about how many chances they can produce in a game. And that's all been linked recently to the form of Huang and also the form of Mario Lamina alongside Pablo Sarabia. These sort of three have been very important in terms of Wolves' chance creation. And we know when they create chances, goals come as a result. And it's good to see Wolves thriving in front of goal. Gary O'Neill's got that team being very workmanlike without the ball. And then when they have it, springing the counter attack and you know, taking as many chances as possible. Against a side who plays a very similar style of football, Sean Dyche normally plays 30 to 35% um, of the ball. Out of the two sides, Everton probably played the nice on the eye football. When they have it, the likes of McNeil, Harrison, and now that Andre Gomez is back as well, can play some beautiful balls in behind to the Calvert Lewins. The in the goals as well right now. So both teams are very hard to stop. Everton probably in the better form of the two sides. But, you know, we know how good they can be on the counter attack at home and know how good they can be at home. I've got Wolves just edging this one in a 2 1 game. I think it's a close game, but I think Wolves just get over the line with the home form and a bit of the extra quality in the final third. Our next game takes us to the city ground. It is Nottingham Forest hosting Manchester United. 
Two teams that are very hard to predict at the current point in time, especially Forest with that new manager bounce. You know, they go and get a poor red card against Will Bully two games ago that cost them a result versus Bournemouth. Bournemouth with the 93rd minute winner there with Solanke. Then they go and absolutely dominate um, Newcastle over a sort of 20 to 35 minute period where Chris Wood takes over the game. His hat trick wins it for them. And it's so hard to see where they're going to go right now. But a few things we've seen so far is Murillo's performance has been enhanced with his position in the team currently. And Nuno's moved um, Morgan Gibbs White from the wing back into midfield and gone with Hudson Adore and Alanga alongside Chris Wood up front. That has seen some positives in that game. We saw how good Gibbs White is in the press, how much he can create from that number 10 position. And that's going to cause Manchester United problems with this constantly changing back four, where people will be sick, injured, and the like. There's constantly moving bodies. Um, so it's going to be worrying signs for Manchester United, especially with. Um, their former player, Anthony Alanga, in the form of his life, scoring goals for fun, being a threat, getting him behind, constantly testing the keeper. That's the big thing this season. He's either made a good pass or he's you know, shot a goal and hit the target and made sure the keepers have to make some saves. He's a danger man for Manchester United to shut down. And with Wolves playing this sort of 4-2-3-1 style of football now and a bit more on the front foot, going to worry about the flanks, especially the pace that Hudson and Dwayne Alanga can bring alongside that really, really robust midfield led by Murillo there. So Manchester United have their work cut out for them. They actually come off a great second half and a 3-2 win versus Aston Villa. The first major scalping in Ten Hag's um, you know, season this year. He's tried different things. He's tried different combinations. And finally, they go over the line versus a sort of top six side. It was a very impressive performance. All they're behind Alejandro Ganacho, Marcus Rashford, and then finally Rasmus Hoyland in the goals. And Maybe that's the front three going forward. If these guys can all continue that sort of work ethic, that sort of form, and that clinical nature in front of goal, Manchester United can go further and can push up into those European positions. But it's consistency with Manchester United. Can they do it now on the road? Can they put together two good games? We'll have to wait and see. And this one here, I think Manchester United carry their good form. I think there's enough positives from the last game to take over to this one. I've got Manchester United win this game, two goals to one. Our next game is an all-London affair. It's Fulham hosting Arsenal. Obviously, Fulham really disappointing last time out. Dominated off the park by Bournemouth. It was a sort of even battle early on, but once that first goal went in, um, the Cherries absolutely burst the bubble of Fulham and totally got on top of them. And they continue to worry me with, you know, they haven't got a focal stri uh, you know, striker or a target man up front. They really struggle for chance creation. And since Jimenez's red card after his you know, great little run of form, they've seen the drop-off in performances. Obviously, come up against some great sides, but haven't been quite the same team. And they come up against an Arsenal side who really want to bounce back after a, a really disappointing 2-0 loss midweek to West Ham. So two teams wanting to bounce back, but Arsenal, they need it. In second place currently, Liverpool taking top spot off them. You've got to worry about if this is going to be a permanent thing where they're struggling in front of goals. Their chance creation has not been clinical. There's not you know clear-cut clinical chances. And as such, they're struggling in games. And I feel like we're starting to see a bit of a trend here where the defence is holding up for times. But if you know they get broken and as team scores on them, you can easily hold on and try and get a three points like West Ham did. So that's going to be Fulham's mindset. Try and absorb as much pressure as possible. Spring the counter-attack and possibly catch Arsenal off guard, especially with the form that Zinchenko's in really mistake-prone and Ben White struggling at the moment as well, coinciding with some poor ability in front of goals. Arsenal are vulnerable right now and a chance to get at them despite them being second in the league. With all this being said, though, I think Arsenal will bounce back. I predict them winning this game two goals to nil. Fulham will try and make it a scrap, but both teams are struggling in front of goal at the moment and Arsenal have the more quality as such. Arsenal got the win in this one. Our next game keeps us in London. It is Tottenham hosting Bournemouth. A very, very interesting affair, this one here. Tottenham coming off a very, very devastating 4-2 loss versus Brighton. For the first time Brighton really punished a team in a very long time. And it goes to show without Christian Romero at the back and how exposed they can be with their fullback setting so high up the pitch. The chance of Bournemouth getting a very, very historic win here. You know, Tottenham right now, with a lot of injuries, a lot of ins and outs, suspensions and the like, they're really all over the place. And Andrews continue to play his style of football, and I respect that. But it's going to cost some results and going to make the ship goals for fun. And we've seen in the last few games, they're conceding a lot of opportunities just recently. They've been scoring more of them. But in this game, last time out, they got exposed because Brighton are very clinical in front of goal and made them pay. And Bournemouth are going to try and probably do a similar sort of thing. We've seen that front four constantly be such a threat with Clive, with Tavernier, um, with Semenya and Solanke. 
And then the midfield as well, Cooks had a great performance as this season. They've just got more depth in there, growing week after week. Seems this team has more and more confidence. They're playing on the ball a bit more, controlling possession a bit more, playing through the lines, and playing some really attacking, exciting football. And once they get past halfway, they're a very hard team to stop with their pace and their directness towards goal. And I think that could you know, really expose Tottenham, especially with those high and wide fullbacks and wingers. They allow Semenyo and Tavernier or Clivert to get in behind. And as such, I think it'll be a very entertaining game, this one. I'm going to be bold with so I'm going to predict a 2-2 draw. I think Bournemouth have really taken the Spurs at home and really catch them off guard. We've already seen them take the, the, this sort of style of football away and beat Manchester United and challenge other teams. So it'll be a very interesting game, and I think Bournemouth will take something out of it. Our next game is arguably the game of the weekend. Liverpool are back at Anfield hosting Newcastle United, and what a game this one uh, plans out to be. After that early season where Nunes came back and scored that winner for Liverpool being you know, down to 10 men, have a chance to do it once again against Newcastle, who's really much out of form right now. Obviously, Liverpool coming to this game top of the league. It's in great form recently, scoring goals for fun, creating chances for fun, and a clinical 2-0 win last time out versus Burnley. They're carrying the good form right now. And in this game here, you've got to think the wing is going to be the key to their result right now. Luis Diaz, Mo Salah, exposing some really out of form fullbacks for Newcastle and that midfield as well. You, you hope you see that endo performance continue, his high level of output. Obviously, with Graven Birch and Jones and Gak Poe can go through there. And it says that right now, despite it being a sort of you know, misfits bunch of midfielders that are a bit all over the place, they're getting the job right, done right now and might not be so solid defensively. But with, when you've got Van Dyke at the back uh, and, you know, Simicast, who'd, who'd dropped out, but now you've got Gomez in there playing some really good football. It's really hard to look past the Liverpool side because they've got defensive depth at the back and, and quality right now. And you've got some of the most talented forwards in the game. So, you know, coming over to Newcastle side that's lacking form, um, low in confidence and struggling right now, struggling to create chances, struggling to score chances. I can't see it going any other way than a Liverpool win. They were poor last time out versus Nottingham Forest. They had a good sort of 30 minutes to start the game off. But Newcastle just fell away and their defensive solidity that held them so well last season has totally disappeared. And as such... I think Liverpool run a little bit rampant in this game. I've got Liverpool winning this game, three goals to one, and making a true statement on the Premier League. Our final game takes us back to London. It's West Ham versus Brighton, and two teams coming off very, very important results. Firstly, West Ham, a 2-0 win at Arsenal. Another big scallop taken this season. They continue to surprise me. They're a team that yo-yoed around for a little bit in the weeks prior, but have put together now three games in the Premier League of consistent, really high-level performances. In this Arsenal game was that. It was David Moyes' pragmatism at his best, sitting in deep, absorbing a lot of Arsenal pressure, but not allowing really clear-cut chances. And then when you get the chance, have a great Maverick Panos header, um, followed by a great finish later on by Thomas Socek, and you go and win the game 2-0. And it didn't really look phased at times in that game. They were very solid um, and look like a really professional side when the way they absorbed the pressure, took their chances and got out there with the three points. They continue to be a real top five, top six contender this season with the way they're playing. Come up against a Brighton side who we haven't seen them score this amount of goals in a long, long time. And they finally put four past the side like they were doing for fun early in the season. Coincided with a Stupinian in returning for the side. He creates a lot for them in that fullback position. But also young Hinshelwood as well. He's really shone in recent weeks. The youngsters scoring once again Brighton and attacking for that fullback position, getting really high up and in the box and in the uh, in the six-yard box there to put the ball away. You know, you've got great form from Jao Pedro right now who continues to score at will. You know, the midfield's still lacking in areas, but if you can bypass it with solid fullback play and wing play, you might better continue to get away with things. And I think they'll continue their good form here into this game here. They obviously come up against a West Ham side that they're very hard to beat at home though. So I think West Ham just get over the line in this one. I'm then winning this game at a tight one, two goals to one. With that all being said, ladies and gentlemen, that brings the prediction video for match week 20 to an end. We are past the halfway point. I can't believe it. It's flown past this season. Hoping for another good weekend with some more correct score lines or correct results um, this weekend to push that points tally up. Uh, and absolutely loving the Premier League at the moment. The Christmas period is so exciting to watch. Constantly games on and constantly great games on at that as well. So cannot wait for this upcoming weekend over the new new year period. Super exciting and expect some more upsets because that's what the Premier League continues to give us. 
And with that all being said, guys, if you enjoyed the video, can you please smack a like on it? Subscribe to the Players Own channel for more football content and other sort of sporting and outdoor content coming on its way very, very soon. Um, and also share the channel with mates who would enjoy this type of content. That would be much appreciated. That all being said, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the weekend's football action. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Peace.